Hello. Today we will learn graphing techniques. So we will have a single variable function like this one uh, y equals to e to the x sine x and we would want to graph it and not only graph it we want to find out its special turning points such as maxima, minima and other behaviors of the graph like points of inflection and so on. We might even want to find asymptotes if there are any though this particular problem doesn't uh, explicitly asks us to find the asymptotes. This is a sec this is a problem from Vstat 2007 I think yes and uh, it's a ISI entrance problem. We will work on this particular type of problems uh, using a template because what we have to do is we have to systematically extract information using tools from calculus and then use those information to graph the function. For that uh, I have created a template which you can download from the comment section of this video if you're watching this in YouTube or you may go to chinta.com the course repository you will find it there. It's a PDF file you can get a printout of it or something. So let's start working on this. Uh, the first thing first we want the one let's write the function e to the x sine x. Now in step by step we will develop several information about this function. First we want to compute the first derivative f dash x and uh, we will want to do it in a very compact manner. Let's see how e to the x sine x. Now the derivative of it is obviously e to the x sine x times uh, plus e to the x cosine x. But uh, there are three functions involved and whenever there are more than one trigonometric function involved, this is a, you can say this is a tip, if there are more than one trigonometric functions involved in a particular expression, uh, reduce it to a single uh, t-ratio. Reduce more than one t-ratio to a single one. And this is not true only for graphing uh, problems. It's true for in general any problem. You would always want to reduce the number of types of functions you were working with. It makes your work easier. It's easier to work with less type of functions in most cases. Okay, so how to do that in this particular context? So let's take e to the x common and we have sine x plus cosine x and there is a very standard procedure to convert this into 1t ratio. What I'll do is I'll multiply with square root of 2 and I'll divide or I'll sort of multiply with, with 1 over square root of 2. So everything remains balanced but we have this 1 over square root of 2 now inserted in, into these two slots. Uh, if you take this 1 over square root of 2 com common from here, you will notice that it will multiply with square root of 2 and everything will be back to what it was. So it's a balanced procedure. We cannot introduce any new uh, thing in the expression. Uh, we have to keep the expression same. We can only manipulate it to a certain extent. So this is square root of 2 e to the x. Now we know that 1 over square root of 2 is cosine of pi over 4. Then we have sine of x. And then I can replace 1 over square root of 2 by sine of pi over 4. Cosine of x. And that was the whole point of introducing 1 over square root of 2. Because we know at the back of our mind that it is cos cosine of pi over 4. Or sine of pi over 4. So square root of 2 e to the x. This is sine of x plus pi over 4. So now see we have only two functions involved in this expression e to the x and sine of x plus pi over 4. So let's write that, let's record that in this chart that we have. So this is basically 
So to keep track of everything we do. I'll write both the expressions because it's actually easier to um, work with f dash x in this form when we compute f double prime x but it's easier to do it otherwise. Easier to compute the critical points which we will do next using e to the x sine of x plus pi over 4 squared of 2 times. So this thing is will be handy when we compute the critical points. Okay, so we have found the first derivative. Very nice. Let's go ahead and find the critical points. Now, what are critical points? Critical points are the points of or the x values where uh, first derivative is either 0 or it is undefined. So of course in this particular situation first derivative cannot be undefined. It can only be undefined if you are div dividing by 0 or square root of something negative is coming up but none of those things are happening here uh, or it could be some weird function also then we would have to be more focused on its domain. In this case we are dealing with um, exponential function and the trigonometric function which has entire real number system as their real number line as their domain so we don't really have to worry about undefinedness we only have to worry about when it is zero so let's figure out when this is zero and realize that we are interested only in this interval um, negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi we are not interested in the entire real line we are only interested in this much. So let's do that. Let's find the critical points. So we will set this square root of 2 e to the x sine of x plus pi over 4. We will set this equal to 0. Clearly, this square root of 2 is not 0. e to the x is never 0. So we are only left out with sine of x plus pi over 4. So whenever sine of x plus pi over 4 is 0, the entire function is 0. So or entire derivative is 0. So let's set sine of x plus pi over 4 equal to 0. Now x plus pi over 4 is then equal to some integer multiple of pi, right? Because sine of an integer multiple of, of pi, that is 0. So we know that x plus pi over 4 is then some integer multiple of pi. So k is any integer. So this means that x is equals to k pi minus pi over 4. But we know that for our problem the angle the x is between negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi. So we want k pi minus pi over 4 to be between these two values. Let's divide by pi all along and we will get negative 2 k minus 1 fourth positive 2. Right? We divide by pi all along. Divide by pi. All right, then we will have, let's add one fourth to the entire, to all the sides. So we'll have this two plus one fourth. So clearly this tells us that K is one of these four values, negative, Z, negative one, zero, one, and two. So we only care about these four values of k, which means the value of x is equals to negative 1 times pi minus pi over 4, which is negative 5 pi by 4, uh, 0 times pi minus pi over 4, which is just pi over 4, 1 times pi minus pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 4, and 2 pi 
minus pi over 4, which is 7 pi over 4. So these are the uh, five values. I made Mr. Minus sign here. These are the four values of x, which makes the first derivative 0. So these are basically the critical values. Uh, let us scroll up and record those this information that we have just found. So we have negative pi over 4. Okay, let's start with negative 5 pi over 4. So that's the smallest one. Negative pi over 4. Positive 3 pi over 4. Positive 7 pi over 4. So these are basically the four x values where the first derivative is 0, hence they are called the critical points. And we will mark them on the number line for f dash x. So basically, the number line for f for f dash x is the next thing in the line. So what we will do is we mark the critical points and also the end points in this number line. Minus and this number line has a very specific use that we will see in a bit. Three, three pi over four, seven pi over four. So we have all the critical points plotted in the number line, and uh, in the next video we will see how we can use this. Uh, all this information and more information to draw the graph.